Hello and welcome back to Curiously Polar, the show that talks about all things very north and very south. And uh, my name is Chris Markward, and with me uh, today on video is Henry. Henry, how are you doing? I'm great. How are you? That's a <laughs> fantastic new experience. <laughs> yes. So for for all those who listen to this show, um, we are recording this as a video too because there are some visuals we want to show you and uh, just because we can now now that everyone works in their home offices and uh with all the corona things um we have all practiced using cameras talking into cameras and uh, yeah that's what we're doing here so if you want to see this show uh, check the show notes there's a link to uh, youtube where we will post this one as well so uh, without further ado let's dive into the topic and i have the feeling that we're not going to talk about music today am i right you are right and we we're not finishing this series uh, still um ongoing and we got some amazing feedback I'm, I'm really really glad about the emails we uh received for that series but there is an urgent urgent uh, topic and uh, we just would love to squeeze that in between and uh, mm -hmm. talk about that today I'm not sure if you um, heard about that because the uh, media coverage in Western countries is not that dense, actually. There is no dense media coverage other than for one topic still, and that's still the virus at this point. We're recording this on June the 16th, and um, yeah, that thing is still with us. So, um, of course, there's also the unrest in the US, and I think those things have pretty much dampened down all media coverage, um, all other media coverage. So I've not heard of this until you told me that you wanted to record an episode on this. So um, this is about an oil spill, isn't it? It's an oil spill. And that's a devastating oil spill. Just mm -hmm. to give you a comparison um, for those who um, experienced that, that's comparable to 1989 Axon Valdez. Um, oil spill in Alaska. Oh wow! So, so this is in uh, the Arctic. Ha this is happening in the Arctic. That's why it's relevant for uh, for the exactly. show, right? It's let's, happening let's in the Arctic. Let's put this on the map. Let's put a map on the screen. It's uh, the Russian Arctic. It's an area that's part of uh, the river system that leads into the Kara Sea, mm -hmm. uh, which is directly part of um, the Arctic uh, tributary oceans. And uh, what actually happened there is that end of May, beginning of June, um, diesel oil tanks of a uh, power plant from the local mining giant uh, just collapsed due to um, pillars sinking into the ground because the permafrost is uh, melting. And that leaked up to 20,000 tons of diesel oil into the environment. Okay, so I was I was just about to say a diesel tank that doesn't sound like uh, anything major um, because we've all seen like um, oil tanks and stuff that you have in your houses. But this is like a big tank here on the map. I think we see uh, uh, some circles here that probably are some of these tanks that, that have this problem. So what you're Those saying tanks, is... Those tanks, they have capacity of 30,000 tons. 30,000 so tons, okay. That's a lot. That is quite a lot, and um, the the spill started with a coverage of 350 um, square meters in the beginning, but it just spread um, a lot uh, mm -hmm. to uh, polluted rivers and um, uh, major lakes in the vicinity, and it, it threatens to travel further on um, into the Arctic Ocean, and um, that's one of the big impacts so here in the yeah. video, I'm, I'm zooming out again just to give an idea that um, this is near like a whole river system and this goes straight into the Arctic Ocean here. Um, so you're, you're saying that this has been, uh, that the tank has been, has broken because of the permafrost melting and it was built on permafrost. Exactly. It's it's Siberia, it's Arctic Russia, and um, like everywhere else in the Arctic, um, construction uh, usually requires uh, building on permafrost, mm -hmm. and you could rely on that in the uh, in the past. But um, since climate change is just a uh, yeah, proceeding thawing of permafrost quite rapidly, we have this um, yeah significant uh, thaw in the past years. Uh, we have a uh, chronic of minor incidents of collapsed buildings or collapsed uh, pipelines 
but this here is um, yeah, a major outcome of a uh, permafrost melt that incident. is worrying. And it, it, hasn't, it, is indeed, it hasn't been covered anywhere. I mean, I haven't really seen any anything about this over here in the media. It has some coverage if you know what you're looking for. It's not like okay. a major thing that's on the on the. Um, Doesn't like make the front, front page. Yeah, exactly. But we have coverage um, from New York Times, for example. Um, we see Wired has uh, talked about that. Uh, Rutus and AP, um, the the news agencies, are on it. The Guardian has reported on that. Um, how long, how long has it taken for them to report on that? Because I read here that this is not too long ago. This is end of May, the 29th of May when this happened. So It that... took five days. Um, to, well, the, the reaction was very, very slow. And that's actually part of a major investigation in Russia. And uh, what's really surprising is the um, rather open... Um, media coverage. It's a very broad media coverage in, in Russian media. So right now, a lot of Russian colleagues are sharing translations of articles, uh, of, of news articles. And um, what happened is actually that the local politicians tried to cover up for the company and the governor didn't um, got notice of that uh, until five days after the uh, the incident. Oh, so so it took a while. Um, but but, but the, the Russian media um, talking about this is is one of the things that I find a bit surprising because I don't know I've my my I, I mean just looking back at major disasters um, I mean the first one that comes to mind even though it wasn't directly in Russia is uh, is Chernobyl and how that has been that has taken a while to get some uh, better information about so uh, that this is out. In, in the in the open in the media within like five days is um, yeah to me surprising yeah I think we have uh, one big um, feature that helps a lot here and that's that um, Russia's president uh, Vladimir Putin did not knew about that and when he um, got note of that he figured that when this would just be discovered by Western media that would turn into a huge news shitstorm um on an ecological scale so 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 it's it's more of a, a preemptive openness uh media strategy to yes keep, and 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 there is media okay let's let's open this website here rt uh is a website or, that uh, or most friendly russian coverage paper normally that's that's my <laughs> that's my um idea about what rt is it's very pro-russia and uh and uh, they are covering this like with video. Let let me just play some of that. Now here we have is that the video? Yes, that's the video. So um, there's a a whole bunch. No, this is the <laughs> this is the wrong one. Let me play the correct one here. Um, here we go. There's a there's a video about like what the landscape looks like. Um, I think you can get an idea about how how arctic it is i mean that's pretty much what i want to say this is very this is arctic tundra yeah you, arctic you see tundra, it's a very yes it's a very frag fragile ecosystem you have um very low growing um fauna uh, flora mm. and um a very fragile um fauna as well so what happens right now is that the the um pollutants are just entering the streams of the river uh, the river is leading into the next big lake, which is a, a major lake in uh, Siberia. And from there, it goes straight into the uh, Kara Sea through um, uh, through a lake called uh, Piacino Lake. So the Piacino Lake is feeding um, a river called Piacino, and that just leads into the Kara Sea. So th that's the big threat right now. Mm -hmm. um, however, after... Um, Putin took note of that and just figured that it might end in a, a very bad coverage um, for for Russia. Mm -hmm. He immediately um, called out um, a state of emergency for uh, the site, and that enabled a lot of um, of assets to to be transferred there and to help out. It's a it's a big um, yeah. Yeah, big movement going on there right now to to clean the space. The company actually um, has taken over responsibility without denying anything. So they they are, are actually paying a lot of money. 
and the uh, yeah, it's you. You have to know that the company responsible here is a subsidiary of um, a, a big holding owned by the richest oligarch in uh, in Russia, Vladimir Potanin, mm-hmm. and. For him, it's a lot ex- at stake. I'm not sure if if everybody recalled what happens to the previous um, richest oligarch in in Russia after he um, took on uh, to to uh, oppose the Kreml or a Kremlin. Um, his empire, his banking empire, is just or also the the um, oil company uh, is basically not existing anymore. I'm not hmm. sure if 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 you remember that. Well, the other thing that comes to mind, and uh, I, I, I must admit I'm not entirely up to date on Russian politics at this point, but I think there's a, there's an election or some changes coming up uh, for Putin. So I think he has all reason to uh, to be open about this and to be proactive about this for just his his own political future. That's my that's just an assumption. It shows a very active know. president yeah. for a very good cause. So to to protect the environment, it protect looks the, very good the for area. Putin. Yeah, it does. It's very very good media, very good press for him, and um, also to, uh, for for Arctic policies of, of Russia. Um, you also have to consider Russia has a lot of activities of mining, drilling activities um, in in the Arctic region going on. They have a lot of terminals there where they um, transfer gas, uh, liquid natural gas from from Tamiya region or Yamal region um, to to Norway, for example, uh, through the Northern Sea Route. So if such an oil spill in the Arctic region would just have a a huge ecological impact in the Arctic Ocean, if that would reach the Arctic Ocean, that would be a super GAU for, for, for Russia because that would basically mean that the activities the mining and drilling activities um in the area are not safe they are not um reasonable and that has a huge impact on um russian economy of course okay so um let's 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 put it, all of this together so end of may this tank broke because of uh thawing thermofrost uh term therm- Permafrost. Thermofrost. 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 <laughs> I just invented a new product. Permafrost. And uh, and uh, we're talking, um, let me just read up on this, uh, a, a tank that has the capacity of 30,000 tons, uh, which was not quite full, but 21,000 tons of uh, diesel oil spilling. And the, 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 the picture it's is... It's not only s- diesel oil. It's, it's, a, it's a mixed of all kind of oil products on yes. the way uh, on the way from the the raw material to the final product right it's and the, all and the different pictures, types there the pictures in the video i mean it, it looks quite harmless looking at it because the oil has the has the um the, the oil will spread out very thin um and and look like a little rainbow on the water but it means that there is a huge area that is covered now and that uh will have an impact on the the flora the fauna everything pretty much that's also a very very important uh, factor here that the the river and the lake um that's um yeah part of the of the spill or that's polluted they are very shallow that means that the impact of that thin film of oil on top of that has a much much uh, a bigger reach because just shallow ecosystem shallow water means that the the, the the outreach of the thin layer of oil on top of that is much much bigger and uh, greenpeace russia actually thinks that it would take years to to clean up well if it's so, if it's fully possible because i mean some some of that oil has been going straight into the ground it's not just on the surface um where it is uh, where we know how hard it is to uh, contain oil spills that are on the surface but then there's also part of that just that went straight into the ground. So there's a huge area that is um, that is contaminated now. I think we're talking, uh, let me see the numbers here. There's like 180 square kilometers um, that are polluted. And that was on the 4th of June. So that that's like uh, 12 days ago. So... It it does have it does have an impact that um, I'm not sure how big it is by now, but that is definitely not where it stops. 
And one thing we all also have to keep in mind is that the whole area, due to the activities of that um, factory of that plant there, is already one of the most polluted places in the world. So we already have a huge um, pollution in the area. On top now, this oil spill, and the oil spill threatens to move on into the Piacino uh, Lake that covers 735 square kilometers surface area. So it's really difficult here um, with the shallow currents to stop it from there flowing further on through the um, Piacino River into the Cara Sea. So you said Greenpeace said it will take years. I um, have no reason to doubt that, uh, knowing about past disasters happening. Um, that will also be quite expensive, I would, I would think. There must be a lot of resources being poured into this right now. Yeah, they're talking about um, up to two, um, two to six billion um, US dollars. To, to clean up the, the entire spill. I compare it with um, Exxon Valdez. Exxon um, paid up to six billion um, for the whole cleanup around um, the Exxon Valdez, including fines and activities and stuff. Uh -huh. so, it's so it's a major, major cost factor there as well. So I, I think this but the, 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 the interesting... The interesting thing is that the the mayor of the of the town where the factory um, is situated in called Norilsk, um, the, the mayor there is kind of the um, of the of the guy that gets prosecuted for it because he was um, supposedly the one who delayed the uh, transferring um, yeah, transferring the the information from the company to uh, government officials. And he just got um, prosecuted by um, by Russian officials, and he found guilty. And the the reach within the the measures the um, uh, yeah the me measures of the court would have been up to twenty years of uh, jail for that. Okay. And now I'd like uh, to ask you, what do you guess was his fine? <laughs> so in the past I would have said <clears throat> he probably got off easy but uh given all the circumstances and all the um <laughs> the strength being demonstrated from the government I would think he probably got something close to the maximum. Well it's it's not um final right now they um talk about a fine of 120,000 uh Russian ruble uh -huh. which Converts into roughly one thousand five hundred euros. Oh, that's not a lot. <laughs> is that all? Is that all? It's, that's a terrible punishment, isn't it? For and 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 the punishment is for him not reporting it quickly enough. Yeah, uh. to, to trying to covering. Uh, he he was not not um, transferring that at all. Um, the the officials in in Moscow actually figured that through social media. So actually, um, people oh. from the area. Just sent pictures on to uh, V contact here and um, the, the the local uh, Facebook copy, and um, through that that actually went into public. Interesting. So maybe things have not changed that much. I think. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah. one thing they try right now is they try to do like what everybody would do with an oil leak on water. So they have this buoy system um, that tries to uh, keep that in. That's a nice measurement, but that's definitely not enough to uh, prevent the oil from moving on in the, in the water column. So we have uh, a big thing here that actually Greenpeace and WWF are um, pointing out and uh, triggering. It's a, quite remote area so it's rather difficult for activists to to reach the area so that plays a little bit into the hand of um of the officials to um yeah, clean the scene uh on the surface to make it look nice again it really takes time to tell how good the measures the cleaning measures um actually will be and that's just something i'm really curious about it's a huge area we're talking right now and it's still going on and uh yeah that's just something to ha keep a look on it so a good the good thing is it is out in the open it's not being 
uh, hidden too well. I think it's 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 impossible to hide something like this in times of social media. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, also satellite pictures. You can see the oil spill very very clearly on the satellite pictures. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, and 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 the <laughs> there are a few things happening right now in the satellite picture world, and one uh, service that is being <laughs> brought up right now is um, or that is being built right now is a live satellite picture service by because most of the satellite pictures that you see on google earth cool. and so on are just snapshots in time and then they age and then they need to be redone to uh, to um, present newer information but there is a, a whole system being built right now that will uh, enable companies and maybe the public i don't know to access live satellite pictures so you can trace these things you can track these things much better in the future and um i think over the next years we will hear a lot more about that so um that is at least one of the areas that uh that this these services are de being developed for um i don't think um <laughs> i don't think there's not a military use of that as well but um we're looking at some interesting stuff coming uh from a technology point of view um with all the new That's satellites true. going up in space so uh well uh thanks for bringing us this current news this is uh scary interesting and something that yeah is taking place in the arctic right now so uh i think uh, you've written up quite an extensive um write-up for our show notes so uh if you are either if either you're watching this on youtube right now or you are um, listening to this on the podcast just go to the show notes there's uh, all the links and everything in there that uh, we could find so you can do some of your own research and uh, yeah again if you want to watch this at a video uh, check the show notes as well because there's a link to our youtube channel there and um, uh, with that i i think um, let's say goodbye you can of course find us on our website curiouslypolar.com there's all the other episodes this is the first video, so the older ones are audio episodes. Um, you can send us email if you want to contact us, info at curiouslypolar.com. And of course, we are on Twitter and on Instagram at curiouslypolar. And with that, um, thanks very much and till next time. Bye-bye.